Hi everybody and thanks for joining me. Today I want to talk about five tips that I think every teacher should know about working in Canvas. And we're going to get beyond the basics of how to create an assignment and how to adjust your time zone and your settings. Assuming that you know how to log into Canvas and that you're comfortable teaching in Canvas, I want to get to some tips and tricks that I think that you should really know. So the first thing is a feature called undelete. Now suppose that you have an assignment or discussion thread or a Canvas page and you delete it. Now Canvas gives you plenty of warning beforehand as you're about to delete it that, uh, by the way, are you sure you want to do this? But sometimes it happens regardless. So here I have some assignments and let's go ahead and delete this module two written assignment. I'll go ahead and delete it. They're going to say, are you sure you want to delete this assignment? Yeah, I want to delete that. And then you realize, oh wait, I actually don't want to delete that after all. So it's still there in the course and I can access it. What you're going to want to do is go up to your URL. You're going to have your institution URL and then courses, the course number. Right after the course number, you're going to type in undelete and that's going to take you to a list of items that you've deleted. Some of these might be discussion threads. Some of them might be assignments or wiki pages. And so in my case, I just deleted this assignment module two written assignment. And all I'm going to do is click restore and it'll put it right back there in my assignments list. Now this is unpublished, so I'm going to have to go ahead and edit it and publish it again. So it might have been lost, but now I can recover that. So undelete is a tip that I think that everybody should know about it. You should have that in your quiver of arrows. The other thing I want to show you is how to do styled tables. Now if you look on the page here, these two tables are exactly the same in terms of the code, except for the one table on the right has a little bit of code in the CSS right here. And you can see that they look differently. The one on the left is default. This is how a normal table would be presented. And to the right, you can see various different enhancements. For one, the table's a, a bit more condensed. There's less vertical space among the rows. Also, as I hover my cursor over, you can see an animated effect. And then you can see that every other row is highlighted. And if I were to add a row, like right in between Wednesday and Thursday, for example, it would change the order that are highlighted. So I don't have to manually go into each row and say, you're highlighted and you are not highlighted. And there's some other nuances too, such as the first row is a header row. So you can see that font is a little bit different and there's a line between rows one and two. So that really distinguishes this header content with the rest of the content right there. And so all I did, I created the table and I really just copied and pasted the table. And then in the HTML code, I added this class right here. So IC-table and all of this content right here. And I have a blog post that talks a little bit more in depth about this code and as well as other things that you can do to stylize your tables. And the link to that blog post is right in the description of this video. So go ahead and check that out. Let me go ahead and edit this page so that we can look at behind the scenes. Now from this view, from the page edit view, the tables don't actually look different because the style doesn't happen until you save the page and you see the actual published page. But I'm going to jump into the HTML editor and we're going to look at that. So here's the first table and this is a table that you can just build right with the canvas table builder, the editor. And then all I did is I copied and pasted that code and I put the table a second time. But then right here where it says table and the angled brackets, I put in these classes. All of the rest of this content is exactly the same. And you can see that I haven't styled the rows at all. All of the styling is done right here in the class at the top of the page. And so you'll definitely want to consider looking into this code and using this for any time that you have a table on your page content. Another thing I'll show you is embedding. So to show embedding, embedding is to move something from one location to a new location. And in our case, we're going to embed this content. You know, I have a Padlet right here and I'm going to go ahead and open this in a new tab. So here's my Padlet. This is the content that I want to share with my class. What I'm going to do is click on the share button and I'm going to embed this in my blog or website. You can embed from other sources too, such as ThingLink or Sway or Flipgrid, but you're going to want to look for some way that you can share the interaction in a different place. And then you're going to look for the embed code. So here I have the embed code and it says full embed. All I have to do is copy and paste this code and they give me a copy button. So once that's copied, I'm going to hop right back over here to my canvas page and you can go into the HTML editor to do this, or you can do it right in the rich content editor. I'm going to look for that embed link right there. And all I'm going to do is paste the code that I copied and click submit. And then when I save the page, then the content is right there. 
And this again could be a YouTube video, it could be a Microsoft Sway, it could even be a blog post. So embedding content is really great because it lives on a different platform, but then it embeds over here, meaning if I make a change over there, then you'd be able to see the change live in Canvas without me having to do anything really. Suppose if I were to move these columns around and then head back over to Canvas, you can see the change takes place right there. And I can also move it around in Canvas. And then when I head back over to Padlet, then the change is automatic. Let's look at another feature that I think that everybody should know about, and that's how to float an image. So let's scroll down here, and I'm going to put an image right here. I have a placeholder, and I'm going to go to Insert Image. Let's look for something on Unsplash, and I'm going to search for a student. And I'll just grab a random student and put that onto my page. Now by default, if you do this route, if you upload a picture or if you import something from Unsplash, the picture might be pretty big. And so I can make some changes. First of all, I'm going to go to Image Options. And from 1080, I'm going to make this more like uh, 250 pixels and click Done. Now I have my image and my text, but you notice that it goes text, image, text, and then you might put another image and more text. But in this case, I want to actually float the image to the right. And to do that, I'm going to go into the HTML editor and I'm going to do a little bit of CSS. So I went ahead and isolated my image right here. And so it's saying the source is a website and that website is on Unsplash server. And then there's some alt text and then I have a width and a height. I'm gonna to add to this code and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write style equals and quotation mark, I'm gonna put two quotation marks, and the style that I'm going to do is going to be right in here. So first of all, I'm going to float it to the right. That means it's going to float to the right side of the page and the other text is going to come up to the side of it. Now I could keep it just like that, but I actually want a little bit of margin and I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna put margin dash left. So on the left of the picture, I want a little bit of space so that the words don't go right up against the picture. And I'm going to put maybe 25 pixels and also put a little bit of a margin at the bottom of the picture as well. And that doesn't even have to be 25. I could keep it 25, but I'm going to go ahead and put 15 pixels. So this is the trick. Style equals quotation mark, and then you put your CSS properties. In this case, I'm floating it to the right. I'm putting a little bit of margin around it. And I'll go ahead and save and see what that picture looks like now. So as I scroll down, then you can see the picture off to the right instead of just everything pushed to the left. And you can see the text coming right up against the picture, but I have that 25 pixel margin. And so it gives a little bit of space. And the last thing we're going to look at is the redirect tool, which will put a custom link in your course navigation. Now, first I need a link. So let's go ahead and go to howtocanvas.com. And I'm going to put maybe a link to one of these tutorials such as how to work with a Canvas calendar. And so I'll pull this up and I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And then let's head back over to Canvas. I'm gonna to go to settings and then we're gonna to go to apps. I'm gonna search for something called redirect and there's the redirect tool. And I'm gonna add that app to my course. I'll put a name for the redirect tool. In this case, it will be how to use the Canvas calendar. Maybe I'll just put how to use the calendar. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that website that I copied. I'm gonna unselect open in a new tab. I'll just have it right in Canvas and then I'm going to show it in the course navigation. Let's go ahead and add the app. And then I'll go to navigation and let's drag that up to wherever you want it. Maybe I want that right below modules. And I'll save that. And now you can see when I'm at my course home, then I have this link called how to use calendar. And this puts the entire website right onto a Canvas page for me. And it's fully interactive. I can go ahead and interact with the features on the page. Now there's also an option if we hop back over to settings. Now I can install another one. I'm going to go ahead and click add app. And then I'll put in that website once again. I'm going to keep this box checked, force open in a new tab. And I'll put that in the course navigation again. Okay, so I moved them side by side. Now I can click on how to use calendar and that puts the page right into Canvas for me. And if I click on this other one, how to use calendar external, it'll say, okay, here's the URL. You can visit this by clicking on the tab. It'll open a tab and then it opens the page outside of Canvas. So it just depends. Do you want the content to stay within Canvas, which 
Generally, I think that's a really good practice. If you have that option, keep your students in Canvas, but if you need to, then you can push them out of Canvas as well. And so that's a good way that you can customize the course navigation to some extent. I have professors who put custom links to writing centers, for example, or common resources that students might need in order to complete their courses. And so these are the five tips that I really think every teacher should know about. You want to know how to undelete stuff that you've deleted from your Canvas course, how to stylize a table so that it looks really nice and slick, how to embed content from other sources, how to float your image to the right side of the page and put a little bit of margin around it, and then how to use the redirect tool to really customize your course navigation. I would really like to know if you have your own tips that you just think all teachers should know about. Please write in the comments below and let me know what kind of secrets you found about Canvas and what you think is indispensable in your teaching. As a bonus, one last Canvas tip that I can give you is that if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. If you found this content useful, then you'll probably want to see more of what I produce. And you don't just want to play YouTube roulette and watch anything that the AI bots tend to give you. Don't let the machines decide what you think is good content. How to Canvas is good content. It's going to help you to be a better teacher and it's going to help you really discover all of the tips and tricks to Canvas. Thanks again for all of your support and until next time. Happy teaching and morning.